Hi, everybody. We are running like crazy at the IBS show. We are now at the Radon booth, and this is a subject for me that everyone needs to know about. Again, not enough, not enough people understand Radon. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about healthy homes, installation, what we need to know. I understand you you love the product too. We, we love the product. Uh, absolutely. It's uh, the best strategy that we can bring to our new construction to make sure that the indoor air quality for our clients is the best it can possibly be. So being a homes approved builder, you're going to make sure that everyone is safe. I think it needs to be a rule. Anytime we look at a new home, an old home, that it needs to be inspected and checked for radon in the air. Absolutely, Absolutely. Mike. Yep. It's not. No, it's not a rule, but it needs to be for sure. Well, yes. second leading lung of lung, of, of lung cancer. Yeah. So let's. What's the first? Smoking cigarettes. Yeah. So number one over cigarettes. That's a really bad freaking yeah. number. Yeah, it's twenty-five thousand deaths a year in North America alone. Twenty-five thousand deaths to a gas that's in the air that comes from the earth that we don't know enough about. Yeah, invisible. Uh, can't taste it. Can't smell it. And of course, if you're a smoker and you have radon in your house. Yeah. Double whammy. It, it, double whammy, yeah. doubles the risk of uh, dying from lung cancer. So, first thing we need to do is check every single home we live in, especially if you have kids. Simple test, how long does it take? Yeah, you can do a short-term test for 10 to 30 day test. that'll give you a screening. And then before we take mitigation action, we like to have a 91 day test because the radon levels will change throughout the day. They'll change hourly, so we need to get as many reads as we can to understand what the average level is. That's really what concerns us. So to my knowledge, 200 becquerels is the actual limit. Anything above that needs to be addressed. Used to be more, now we're being more health conscious. However, one of the highest I've heard was 16,000 becquerels. In other words, how many times is that? 200, yeah. like that's a lot of math. <laughs> that means there's so much radon in the air. What do we do in the home? <laughs> we sleep in the home. Mom cooks in the home, takes care of the kids. The more you're in your own home, the more opportunity you have to breed this. Very dangerous, let's call it a very dangerous air. Poisonous gas. Poisonous gas. Poisonous That's gas. a good way to yeah. say it. Absolutely. Out. So, easy mitigation. Really, really easy to yeah. fix. We have a couple of issues that we can take care of. One is a whole house. We do it from the foundation, remember? It will come up in the cracks in the floor. So we can do an exterior, interior, sorry, all exterior walls on the interior and then vent it outside. A simple solution Absolutely, yes. to this yeah. also is if you have an existing furnace. Yeah, if you've got a furnace with an HRV or an ERV, there's an indoor air quality sensor controller called a Radostat that will pilot. It constantly measures the radon peaks in the home, not the averages. And when it detects a peak of 150 becquerels, it's going to turn on that HRV or ERV high speed override, run it for 20 minutes and then shut it down. When we install that, we balance that HRV slightly positive. So we're bringing in about 10% more air than we're taking out. And that gives us the positive pressure in the home after that 20 minute cycle relative to the pressure under the slab. Once you do that, physics is our friend because things won't move from an area of low pressure to an area of high pressure. Right. Yeah. And that's a simple map. That's not expensive. No. So think yeah. about this. I mean, Cost to do a roof is usually a lot of money. Cost yeah. to do a bathroom, a lot of money. Cost to remediate your home of radon gas, what, 2,500 bucks? Yeah, $2,500 in most cases. Yeah. In that, yeah. in, for, in, for a Radostat. For a Radostat, right. yeah. Radostat HR installed. I hate to interrupt, we have some questions from the audience, okay? Sure. Maybe you guys can help us with this. Mike asks, do houses on a slab need to be concerned about radon? Who wants to take that? Go ahead, Bob. All right, so, uh, radon gas will migrate through concrete, it'll migrate through plastic, so no matter what you've done in terms of new code built construction, you're still going to have that risk of radon mitigation, of radon migration uh, in through the house. And so maybe David you can tell us a little bit about some of the products that you've got that we could use in new construction yeah, to reduce that risk. So whether it's a slab on grade or a full foundation basement underneath the home, We'd use Radon Guard, which is a structural sub-slab insulation panel. Bob and Mark are using it on their homes. So it blocks it. It, it, prevent, it creates a capillary below the slab, so it gives you that thermal break from the ground, and then you run a vent pipe from below that outside. And 
into that vent pipe, we install what's called a radon fan. It's a sealed fan, and that draws the air from below the slab and vents it outside, creating a negative pressure under the slab, which again is our friend, right? Once, once the pressure's negative under the slab, relative to the pressure in the house, there's no more radon ingressing into the house. So I have a problem, and my problem is, this is one of the most dangerous things on the planet. It's everywhere, yet we're not paying enough attention to it. It's not minimum code. It is not enforced that you do it. Governments are nervous about this because they don't know how to play with such a delicate problem. So they don't want to make an enforcement. They don't want to be liable. But we, as homeowners, home builders, need to understand this. We should introduce it to every single home we do. But well, I think that I, th I think uh, you know some simple steps in terms of mitigation and new construction makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you guys have some great products. Uh, the radon guard, which is the ventilation chase that we create, the breaks that capillary break underneath the slab, and then the radon block radon fabric block that we can use in place of standard six mil poly. Absolutely. So that uh, uh, also doubles as our moisture barrier, moisture barrier under our slab, tape it and seal it. So in the modern day, looking for airtight construction, you know, that system gives us an airtight slab for our energy performance. Absolutely. Uh, it creates our moisture barrier, and it creates uh, our first line of defense in terms of radon mitigation to make sure that the gas isn't coming inside the house. Absolutely. And then in combination with the Radostat, you right. know, we almost, we, we, anybody can be safe, right? Yeah. So before we go any further, let's talk about where radon comes from. We know it's from the ground. Exactly where does it come from? It's a byproduct of the decay of uranium. It's in that decay chain. So we all know uranium is that bad radioactive uh, animal out there. And it's got a half-life of three billion years. So it's gonna be around three for long after billion. we're all gone. That's so. almost as old as you, right? <laughs> oh, wow. So, I'm feeling three billion right, right now. Yeah, today. So as it decays, it becomes radon. And it's actually the radon progeny so radon's got a short half-life of 3.82 days. When it decays, it releases two alpha particles. And those are the radioactive bad boys, or the progeny they're called. And we breathe those into our lungs. It breaks the DNA chain when they release their energy. Our bodies rebuild that DNA chain constantly. And every once in a while, it rebuilds in the wrong order. And that's the origin of the cancer cell. Okay, so I want you to understand something. As we walk around outside, it's been like this forever. We don't know any difference. The air is clean, it's fresh for us to breathe. But when you're trapped indoors with our new technology of making a home airtight, you might as well put a mask on your head, stick it right into the ground, because you're breathing what's coming up from the ground. We can stop this, we need to learn about it, understand it, what we can do to prevent it, and start pushing a new system that says when we're building new homes or doing renovations or buying new homes or buying existing homes, let's do something about it. I care about my kids. My kids are still here. I don't want them breathing in. Yeah. No, I don't want to breathe it in either, but we have a couple more Facebook questions. So this one's from Pauline. I thought if you buy a house and do a radon test, it's a done deal. Do I have to do this every year? Not necessary to do it every year, but you should do it every two to three years. It's inexpensive to test. It's if you do it yourself, it's in the range of $40 or $50. If you hire a radon professional, it's probably going to cost you $200. But it's definitely something because it will change. The, the Earth's crust is constantly working, and that opens up new fissures. And radon is like any other gas. It'll take the path of least resistance, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and David, can people get a test from you guys, a they, test kit they from can, you guys? for sure, yeah. They can get a test kit at radoncorp.com. Uh, we have an online shop, and it'll ship out to you, and you're going to return it to the lab yourself. Uh, next question from Karina is, do I need to detect for radon if I have an electric furnace? And that's a no-brainer. That is yes, you absolutely need to test for radon. It means everyone does. Yeah. Everyone does. Every two years needs to check. Even in commercial buildings, right? Absolutely. Yep. Commercial buildings, schools. Uh, there's a lot of initiatives beginning in Canada now to test the schools. Uh, the province of Alberta is actually putting radon guard and radon block under all the new schools they build. So now we're starting to talk to the province of Manitoba and get all the provinces on board. Let's look after our kids. Absolutely. Callie's coming up with her turn to go to school. We want to make sure she's yeah. safe. Listen, it's simple. Uh, it's the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers. It's cheap to test for. And if you don't know how to test for it, hire a professional. It's that easy. Yeah. And it's not expensive. 
Save your life, your kid's yes. life. Yeah. Get to know what you need to know. Well, particularly in new construction, we want to insulate under the slab because we want to have that warm basement floor. We need to put a moisture membrane. And we need to make it airtight. So why not use the products that are available that double up to make our houses safe from yep. this, this really poisonous soil gas? Yes, yeah, you already have to take that step, so why not use a better product that's going to protect you from gas? That sounds like we're doing it right the first time. That's right. Yes. Yeah, do it right. Okay, well, that's everything. That's all of our questions. Thank all right. you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Don't play with this. Learn more. We'll see you soon.